So today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick demo in World Machine that shows you the basics of making a terrain in preparation for import into Unreal for use with my Auto Landscape Master Material. I've also included a free Gumroad link in the description that'll give you guys access to the project files in case you'd like to crack it open and see how it was done on your own machines. So the very first thing you're going to want to do in World Machine is figure out how big you want your terrain to be. So if I create a new document and then uh, open up the project settings here, I can go in and figure out how big I want it to be. Do I want it to be four kilometers, eight kilometers? And usually while I do this, I go and look up uh, UE4 landscape technical guide um, on Google. And then as soon as I go there, I can scroll down to this area that says recommended landscape sizes. And they have all these different numbers here. I usually choose one of these resolutions. Um, and you know, these resolutions are optimal for the amount of components and optimization. So it's kind of good to just start with a, one of these as a, your initial setup. And you know, here I can change my number. I, I want to go for like, you know, 433 by 433, which in Unreal, uh, one pixel is one meter. So 4033 would basically be 4.033 kilometers. So in here, uh, I could cho choose custom and then change this to uh, 4033. Uh, but, you know, while I'm initially working on my landscape, I don't need to actually have such a high resolution. So I'm going to uncheck custom and keep it low at like, you know, 513. Click OK, and it's it's always better to do it at a low resolution so that when you build, it takes, you know, 10 seconds versus like five minutes to build. And, you know, iteration time will speed up. And, you know, at the very end, you do a really high resolution and then you get all that detail back. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go into generator, choose uh, advanced per lin right here. This is kind of just your base uh, kind of fractal it's it's basically just your base fractal height generator which uh, you can use to create mountains or you know screw around with some of the settings and and get the shape of mountain that you want to start off with it's just your base generator and i'm just going to click on the presets and scroll through there try to find something uh that's you know pretty generic i don't want it to be too crazy maybe a default or could try wrinkled even and I'm just gonna add an octave an octave is basically like a, a modifier on top and I'm just gonna choose a style flick through see what kind of works and what doesn't you know maybe sharp ridged increase the strength of that and you know what now that I had that I'm not super sure about it so Yeah, do you know what? Let's just try this experimental and uh, see how it goes. And I can add an octave here. And you can see when I'm changing all this, it's changing the, the little tiny little 3D viewport here. Uh, if you had a second monitor, you could see that, but you can only record on one. So let's flip through those, see if we can find something. That's kind of cool, sharp ridged. Let's try that. You can uh, play around with the settings. Maybe add uh, another octave. Let's see. Flick through. Maybe smooth ridged. You know, we kind of just want, like, we don't want a crazy mountain range. We just want something that's going to work for the demo. So that's good. There's all these settings here. Like, you can screw around with a bunch of them. Just play around. There's so many of them that uh, you'll you'll see what they do as you uh, screw around. You know, that that should be good for me for now. And now that I have that, uh, I want to go into my natural and create an erosion pass. So basically erosion uh, does, it simulates thousands of years of weathering and, you know, water hitting the surface repeatedly for years and years. Uh, and, you know, it gives that really nice kind of world machine trademark look that makes your landscapes look really uh, realistic. So world machine basically works uh, with a height map. So these, what these 3D generators are doing, they're basically doing uh, a map, a black and white map that goes from white to black, or yeah, from white to black, with black being the lowest point 
uh, you know, like the rivers, the bases of the mountains, and then the whites being the peaks. So the height field is basically feeding that information into the viewport here and letting us preview what's going on. So we have our 3D height field and then we have our 2D maps as well. Right now we're just working on the 3D bit. So we just want to plug our height field directly into our erosion. And if I select these nodes, I can click F and it'll start previewing them. And as I preview them, you can see it updating in the viewport here. And, you know, it, it's it's a pretty low resolution right now and you're not really seeing all the crazy uh, little flow maps and stuff that it's doing. But double click your erosion node and let's just cycle through some of the settings. You could try like uh, classic world mach machine erosion. Just give some of those nice swoops and stuff like that. And you could up the erosive power. There's a bunch of different stuff that you can do in here. Like, I, I don't even know what all of these things do. I usually just play with them and, and uh, play with them until I get what I want. Click OK. Now that I have that, uh, I want to grab a thermal erosion, or thermal weathering. So if I click that, put it in there, plug the height field directly into it. Oops. There we go. And thermal weathering is almost like erosion, except it mimics uh, thaw and or freeze and thaw cycles. So like ice basically getting frozen onto the sides of the mountain and breaking off, taking bits of the mountain down it. And, you know, it creates these kind of talus slopes at the bases of our mountains and makes them look a bit more realistic. So, you know, you can play with the settings. I'm just going to leave that for now. It's usually pretty good right out of the box. And... Now that I have that, uh, we have our 3D information here, but we want to create 2D information. So like our diffuse map, albedo, and uh, you know, if you wanted to go deeper, you could do a normal map um, or mask out certain bits into channels and stuff, and then use those to mask different materials onto your terrain. But for now, uh, I don't really need that. Like I just want a diffuse map and a height map, and you know, maybe some flow maps to plug into my landscape shader. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a macro. If I go to macros, there should be this quick texture. It came with uh, the latest version of World Machine, and it's pretty awesome. So, And what this does is it's going to give us our diffuse map. So we're just going to plug the height field directly into there. And then uh, we're going to hit F. And as soon as I do that, I can uh, go over to my 3D view right here. And it shows me this 2D texture that's really quick. It's created, but you can see it's not showing any, any of the 3D information anymore. So what I want to do is I want to combine the 3D with the 2D. So World Machine, it's a node-based system that goes from left to right with each sequential node basically adding onto the previous one. So I start with my height map here, my fractal per advanced Perlin generator, and then I wrote it. And then on top of that, I had thermal weathering and then I just plugged that height field information into Quick Texture. And Quick Texture uh, basically textures your 3D information based off of the slope angle. So the more steep your mountain, the more it'll be rock, the, the less steep, the more it'll be green, uh, depending on the settings that you change inside of this node. So if, actually, you know, before I get into that, we should just combine the 2D with the 3D. And to do that, I just go to output and there's a little node here called scene view and that's perfect for combining them. So I'm just gonna take the texture output bitmap here, plug it directly into the input on the bitmap in the scene view. And then I'm gonna plug the height field into the primary input height field of the scene view. And then select that, hit F. So now if I go into my 3D viewport, I get this kind of base uh, combined 3D representation of my mountains. And because my terrain is set to such a low resolution right now, when I build, it's going to take just a few seconds. It should be super quick. See, that, that was nice and uh, painless. So you can see like my my erosion taking place, you know, kind of sculpting the mountains, creating all these nice flow maps that go through all just, you know, it simulates all the weathering hitting the surface of your rock and your mountain. And 
at the base, there's these talus fields. You can see that it's basically uh, the weathering that takes place on the top and the thaw and then all the bits of rock breaking off the side of the mountain, falling to the bottom. And it just it gives you that nice realistic feel. So uh, we're going to go back into our quick texture and I'm just going to cycle through uh, these different color schemes that come with it and kind of choose one that I like. I know there's not too many of them. If you actually go into the macro, you can create new ones, but for now, this is this is good. And I kind of, I like this Alpine Highlands, and let's play around with uh, the settings on that a little bit. You can see uh, the more moisture that I add, the more green it becomes, so it changes the angle at which the green is affecting our terrain. And, you know, that, that's okay. And the slope contribution, you can see it's kind of tweaking it in there. You know, maybe something like that. Feature emphasis basically just adds a bit of contrast and you know, really sharpens up those details. So click OK. And then I'm going to rebuild. And then I'm going to go back to my 3D view. And that seems pretty good for me. So we have a, a quick, super easy uh, super easy terrain here and now that I have that I have to export it out of world machine so that we can use it in Unreal later so in output I'm going to create a couple of nodes I'm going to create height output and I'm going to create bitmap output and so our bitmap is for our albedo texture and our height output is for our uh, height map basically and we need to take our primary height field from our last 3D node right here, plug that into there, and then I'm just gonna open that up. You can uh, set a path for it inside of here. Oh, wait. Yeah, you have to change, change, choose what, what uh, file type you want. For Unreal, RAW 16, that's what you're gonna want. And you know, you can set where you wanna save it. And as soon as you're done, you just click right output to disk. And here, this is our albedo texture. We want to plug our texture output from our quick texture directly into that. And do you know what? Now, now that I'm kind of looking at this, I, I think it could use a little bit of a little bit of tweaking. So I'm going to take um, I'm actually going to take my wear map, which comes from your erosion. And I'm gonna plug that directly into this erosion mask. So I'm pretty much just adding some of the detail from my erosion, a mask, into my quick texture. And I'll rebuild it. And let's take a look. And you can see it's, you know, it's adding just a bit more kind of diffuse information in there. And, you know, a bit of noise, just making it look not so perfect. And now that we have that, uh, there's also this precipitation map and you know how I explain the moisture uh, you know where if we increase it, it becomes more green um, we can basically control that with uh, with a gradient if we want to so if I go to generator gradient you know black to white and let's just select that click F to preview it and you can change the direction on it you can widen the, the gradient click OK and let's just plug that, actually, before we plug it, let's preview it in our scene mode so we can actually see what's happening. Plug it directly into here and watch the 3D. Okay, see that? So you get more rock on the left-hand side and then a lot more greenery on the left. And if we actually double-click that node, uh, you can screw around with the width of it and, you know, break it up a little bit more, change the direction, however you want. And click OK. And now that I kind of have a nice uh, representation of what I want in the 3D viewport, I'm actually going to go back into my project settings and I'm going to increase the resolution so it's, you know, it's, it's a really solid, uh, detailed resolution. So let's say 4033 and, whoops, 4033, just like it says in our landscape technical guide. Okay, that's okay. And see, that should be okay. 
and I'm just going to hit build. And it should take a while, but you'll see. Okay, so we just built it. Let's open up the 3D view. And it should take a second. It's a little bit intense. But, you know what, like, uh, we could go back and uh, play with the numbers. Maybe uh, in quick texture, could uh, increase the moisture a bit so we get a bit more green. And let's just hit build one more time. And the way that World Machine's building build system works is you can see these nodes. This one's yellow, this one's green. And because we've only altered one of the nodes on the far right at the end of our graph, that means it, it only actually has to build from then on. So it doesn't have to rebuild erosion and thermal weathering. And even though it's such a high resolution, it's totally fine. It shouldn't take very long at all. So I'll click OK. Let's go back. OK. So we got like a really, really nice base for, you know, a kind of rocky mountain area. Uh, you might want to export some of your channel masks, you know, like your flow map and stuff. I, I usually use those in my landscape shader. Uh, so what you can do is you can create a whole new texture. So I'm actually, I'm just going to take my bitmap output, copy that, paste it, and hit escape to deselect it. And if I go to, which one is it? Converter. If I go to Converter, there's this thing called a Channel Combiner. And what this basically does is it combines a bunch of different channels. So you can add, you know, say your flow map into the red, uh, your wear map into the green. You could, you know, select portions of your slopes so that you can mask out your rock and whatever else. Like for me, though, I usually just use my flow map. And let's plug that into the red. You know, you might want to grab your wear map. You could use those potentially. Maybe uh, your talus mask, if you want. Uh, you could do it however you wish. And just plug that directly into your RGB, RGB input. And you can see, if I preview that, I get this really funky texture. And what that's doing is, in my art channel, I have my flow, green, wear, C, talus mask. So it just combines them all. And then in Unreal, you can choose which one you want to use to mask whatever material in the landscape shader. So super, super useful. And you can just, you know, go in there and export it however you want. And when you're done, click right output to disk. And one last thing, uh, I've also included uh, in the final package files, if you guys see, I just took uh, a light map maker and added some shadows to this with it and use the combiner to multiply it over top of my texture and then combine it in the scene view here. So it just, you know, you're not going to export it with uh, those shadows in the diffuse texture. It's just basically to make the project files look a bit nicer. So thanks a lot, guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. Cheers. Bye.